Are you interested in what all a Raspberry Pi can do? Or maybe even already have a specific project in mind, but you're not ready to buy the hardware yet? Well, today we're going to show you how to get started without any hardware by using VirtualBox. We're going to get started today by opening up your favorite browser of choice and we are going to visit raspberrypi.org. As soon as that opens up, we're going to go click the menu item for software at the top of the page. On that page, we're going to wind up scrolling down about 75% of the way and then we're going to click on download Raspberry Pi desktop. And after another short scroll, there's one more button for download. And then we're going to let that finish before we move on to installing this in VirtualBox. Okay, now that our download is complete, we're going to go open up VirtualBox on our Windows PC. Then we are going to click the toolbar button for new. We're going to go ahead and choose a name, and this is the name that'll be in the list over here on the left, so something you recognize later. You can select the location where you want to save the files of where this virtual box will be stored. It could be a location on your hard drive or maybe a USB drive if you want it to be portable. Under type, we're going to go ahead and select Linux on this one and then under version we're going to scroll down and do other Linux 64-bit. Once we have that we'll go ahead and select next and on this screen we'll select the amount of memory to choose. Here I'm selecting two gigs because that matches the model of Raspberry Pi that I'm going to use this to test on. And these next few screens are pretty standard for most users. So we'll go ahead and select create on the first one and then we'll click next and then we will click next one more time. And now on this screen, kind of like the memory, I'm making this one 16 gigs for the hard drive space because that matches a pretty standard SD card that most people use on a Raspberry Pi. So at this point, we've basically created the virtual hardware for the Raspberry Pi. And now we need to go in and tell it to boot up off of that Raspberry Pi OS file that we downloaded just a minute ago. To do this with our new virtual machine selected in the list on the left, we're then gonna click the toolbar icon for settings. We then go click the storage menu option, select the empty, then on the right, there's a CD icon that will choose a disk file. And this is where we go find and select and hit open on the file that we previously downloaded from the raspberrypi.org website. We'll click OK to close all that out. And now everything's ready to go. And the next step is we get to fire this thing up by hitting the start button at the top. And as it gets started, it is going to pop up and ask us just to confirm the file that we want to boot off of. And this is the same one that we downloaded already. Now, Raspberry Pi OS is like Linux, where there's a beautiful thing called persistence. So you could actually just run this straight from a USB stick if you wanted. But for now, we're going to scroll down with that down arrow key and hit graphical install and then click enter. And the first screen that we're going to see during the installation process is to select our language. So click on the one you want and then hit continue. Now this next section of the installation, if you read through it, makes it sound big, bad, and scary. It's really the worst part, but we're gonna walk you right through it. We're just gonna leave it on the defaults of guided, use entire disk, click continue. We're gonna click continue on the next screen and then click continue on the next screen one more time as well going to ask us to confirm some stuff we're going to hit continue we're going to go ahead and select the option for yes this time and then click continue for it to actually write the changes 
From here, it is going to run through installation for probably several minutes. The screen may go black a few times while it's installing some video updates. And then when it's ready, we'll ask us to reboot. And there's a continue button for us to click to go ahead and kick off that reboot process. And here we are running Raspberry Pi without buying any hardware so far. When you first come up to your desktop screen, you're gonna get another chance to confirm a few settings like your language, your location, your time zone, a few things like that. So adjust those as you need and then go ahead and click next. This next step is extremely important for the security of your new Raspberry Pi OS and even more so when you actually put this on a piece of hardware and may plug it into your network. You'll notice here that this comes with the default username of Pi and we're not going to get into changing that right now but what you do want to pay attention to on here is that it tells you that it already has a default password assigned and that is the same for everybody who downloads this operating system so be sure to create your own unique password right now so that nobody else knows what it is and we're going to go ahead and click next one more time to begin downloading any updates that may be available for the new operating system. And this certainly could take a while, especially depending on internet, Wi-Fi, things like that. So don't be surprised. It may be better if you want to just kind of head off and do something else and come back in a little while. After 20 minutes or so, it'll finally pop up and say that everything is up to date. So we can go ahead and click the OK button there and then it will prompt us to restart so that it can load in all the new updated software. Now, after rebooting, the first thing that most people notice is why in the world is my screen so small? So we can fix that by clicking on the menu button and then preferences and then screen configuration. And then when that window pops up, we'll click on configure and then we will hover over screens, virtual one, and then resolution and go ahead and click for your desired screen size. When you're ready, we'll do the green check mark to apply it. And once it resizes, you'll have a window to ask to press OK just to confirm that everything looks good. At this point, your Raspberry Pi is now ready to use. Whether you're going to use it for robotics or temperature sensors with some programming, maybe you're thinking about using it just for a desktop replacement for some basic office applications or internet browsing. Uh, maybe you want to check out just what little bit of games that you can either play or program yourself. But no matter what you're planning on using it for, now you have it installed and ready to go without having to plug in another device until you're really ready.